So imagine looking on the horizon and sunrise is half the sky. Okay, that would be terrifying. Will it explode or not? Astronomers and stargazers have long been fascinated by Betelgeuse, a dazzling red supergiant star in the constellation of Orion. The red supergiant star is the closest to Earth. The distance is probably less than 1,000 light years away, or in cosmic terms, a hop and a skip. Neil deGrasse Tyson and other researchers have investigated the terrifying possibilities of what the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, which possesses increased capabilities and extraordinary sensitivity, may reveal about Betelgeuse. Astronomers have been baffled by its recent episodes of dimming and unexpected behavior, which have raised concerns about this celestial giant's future and the potential for an impending supernova explosion. What does Neil deGrasse Tyson have to say about this strange, volatile star acting the way it is? Is Betelgeuse about to blow up? Let's find out. Betelgeuse is a star that has long attracted the admiration and attention of humanity. It is one of the brightest stars in the night sky and one of the biggest stars ever found. But this luminous star monster is more complex than it first appears. The red supergiant star has an eye-catching orange-red color. This group of stars is nearing the conclusion of its lifespan. They blow up and stretch out into space as they get older, making them the biggest stars in the cosmos. 640 light years separate us from Betelgeuse. If you see Betelgeuse in the night sky, you are seeing the star from 640 years ago because it takes the light from this star 641 years to reach Earth. Betelgeuse is not only easily identifiable by its distinctive color, but also by its brightness. It frequently ranks as the 10th brightest star in the sky. It is one of the biggest stars that can be seen with the unassisted eye. It is roughly 15 times more massive and nearly 700 times the size of the Sun. In fact, Betelgeuse is so enormous that it would extend past Jupiter's orbit if we replaced our Sun with it. Betelgeuse is around 10 million years younger than our Sun, which is almost 5 billion years old. Although it is considerably younger than our Sun, it is also much more massive, which means it will burn through its fuel more quickly and have a shorter lifespan. Betelgeuse, despite its size and brightness, has a surface temperature of about 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is lower than the surface temperature of our Sun, which is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Betelgeuse has been the subject of extensive research throughout history due to its brightness, proximity to Earth, and ability to reveal characteristics that are not visible on fainter, more distant stars. Betelgeuse was probably known to even the earliest humans, according to scientists. Additionally, it appears in numerous cultures, mythologies, and legends. Betelgeuse was a member of the constellation Osiris, which the ancient Egyptians called after their mythological deity of the underworld, even though many people refer to the star as being a part of Orion, which is named after the hunter from Greek mythology. According to legend, the star was characterized by the ancient Greek astronomer Claudius Ptolemy, using the Greek word hypokyros, which translates to indicate a tint that can vary from a pale yellow to a light reddish color. This may indicate that the star has not yet changed to its more recognizable reddish hue. The star was given the Latin name Alpha Orionis by German astronomer Johann Bayer in 1603, with the prefix Alpha denoting that it is the brightest star in the constellation. Even though Rigel is now acknowledged to be the brightest star in Orion, it still goes by that name. Betelgeuse's brightness changed over time in 1836, but astronomer and mathematician Sir John Herschel was probably not the first to see it. There is proof that aboriginal oral traditions detailed the variability of Betelgeuse and other red giants far earlier. Since then, Betelgeuse has been categorized as a semi-regular variable star, a category of variable star that occasionally experiences erratic light shifts and periodically waxes and wanes in brightness. Betelgeuse normally has two cycles, one that lasts 400 days and the other that lasts around five years. But a funny event happened in 2019. We'll come back to that. Because of internal thermonuclear fusion events, stars are bright. 
To put it simply, they combine basic elements like hydrogen to produce more complicated ones like helium, producing energy in the process. The simplest fuels run out in huge stars, eight or more solar masses, as they get older, but they gradually burn more complicated fuels until their cores are eventually formed of iron, and the nuclear reaction stops. The high temperatures in a star's interior begin to decrease at that moment because no more fusion is occurring. And as a result, the star's interior's high pressures also decrease. The star starts to disintegrate inward. It compresses before rebounding in a spectacular explosion known as a supernova. Therefore, after they run out of fuel, big stars like Betelgeuse burst as Type II supernovae, swiftly contracting and exploding violently. What is happening inside a star? how much fuel it has remaining, and how close it is to collapsing all influence when a star bursts. But what is happening within Betelgeuse? Neil deGrasse Tyson and other scientists concur that Betelgeuse's core carbon burning is nearing its end. For a big star like Betelgeuse, the carbon burning phase lasts for about a thousand years. If that stage is near the end, Betelgeuse has likely reached the end of its lifespan and may be poised to erupt. But are there any other options? Naturally, there are. Since surface conditions barely alter in the late stage, close to carbon exhaustion and beyond, it is actually impossible to pinpoint the exact evolutionary stage. Astronomers can only observe the star's surface. Nevertheless, what happens inside the star provides a much more interesting story. Betelgeuse may erupt sooner than anticipated, based on observations, data, and modeling. However, and this is crucial, they are unsure of the star's current state of core carbon burning. Some of the models that fit the data suggest that carbon burning may continue for a very long time. When Betelgeuse started dramatically dimming in late 2019, it excited people all around the world. This occurrence is now known as the Great Dimming of Betelgeuse by astronomers. Many thought that the major event, the star's explosion, was just around the corner as it was taking place. Some researchers questioned whether Betelgeuse was approaching a pre-supernova phase, which prevents a giant star's catastrophic death in a supernova, as a result of the dramatic dimming, which was so large. The world was intrigued by reports of the potential explosion since Betelgeuse would be the nearest supernova ever seen and recorded by humanity. Betelgeuse's brightness had been restored to normal by April 2020, but the cause of the dimming remained unknown. The bizarre and unique event was initially attempted to be explained, but the entire image didn't emerge until the following year. Data from observatories, such as NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, were examined by researchers who discovered that Betelgeuse blew its top in 2019. An enormous chunk of the star's surface material was ejected into space by the star. Once in space, this substance cooled and condensed into a cloud of dust that momentarily obscured the star's light. For stars, material ejection is pretty typical. In fact, our sun frequently ejects material from its corona or outer atmosphere in processes known as coronal mass ejections. But unlike the sun's typical ejections, the Betelgeuse eruption was unusual. Betelgeuse ejected a rock into space that most likely weighed more than our moon since it ejected 400 billion times as much mass as is typically released during a coronal mass ejection. The large, previously unseen ejection may have resulted from a plume of gas rising from within the star, boosted by the star's typical 400-day pulsation cycle. But the precise reason and method behind it are still unknown. Scientists have been studying Betelgeuse and its peculiar behavior as the dust literally and figuratively settles and it continues to recover from the great dimming. Although humanity has never seen anything like this surface mass ejection, it's feasible that phenomena like this happen frequently throughout the cosmos. Betelgeuse's proximity, size, and our capacity to view the entire star in fine detail with the Hubble Space Telescope all contributed to the fact that we were able to see it at all. Betelgeuse is visible from many backyards, therefore there are plenty of observations. But scientists rely on observatories like Hubble and the Webb Telescope to gain a detailed look at the star, its atmosphere, and how it is changing. Betelgeuse hasn't yet exploded, despite the fact that it has subsequently become brighter, dimmed, brightened, and so on. 
The star's expulsion of a cloud of hot gas that temporarily obstructed some of the star's brightness is therefore thought to have contributed to the great dimming of Betelgeuse. There is definitely a plot afoot at Betelgeuse. What will happen to us if it explodes? When Betelgeuse does explode, it will be too far away from Earth to hurt or even partially extinguish life on the planet. Studies show that for a supernova to hurt humanity, we would need to be within 160 light years of it. And Betelgeuse is possibly four times farther away. Instead, when Betelgeuse eventually explodes, everyone on Earth will witness a breathtakingly magnificent sight in the night sky. A very, very bright star. A Betelgeuse explosion this close will also please experienced astronomers. After the supernova, they will be able to analyze the star. Meanwhile, the explosion will be fascinating to both amateur astronomers and casual observers. But those who adore Betelgeuse as the brilliant red star in Orion will sorely mourn it when it vanishes. When Betelgeuse finally explodes, it will astound the world, or anyone watching. The star's movement would be visible to the unaided eye. At night, Betelgeuse will gradually become more visible. Its brilliance will peak after a few days. It will continue for about 100 days. It will have the highest brightness. Even during the day, you would be able to see it. According to research, a Betelgeuse supernova would be 15 to 250 times brighter than Venus, currently the second brightest object in the night sky. Then, over the course of hundreds of days, it will start to fade until it eventually vanishes into thin air. Although binoculars and telescopes will be able to see it for longer. But there are other red supergiants in our galaxy other than Betelgeuse. Some might erupt in the sky first, like Eta Carinae. According to statistics, there should be a supernova every 50 to 70 years in a galaxy the size of the Milky Way. Although we have seen the remains of explosions, we haven't really witnessed one in 400 years. Any explosive event is unlikely to occur suddenly, like when a bomb is detonated. There might be warning signs, including lesser explosions prior to the finale. More observations might indicate that the star defies these predictions. For instance, astronomers believed that only red supergiants could explode into supernova until 1987. However, a massive blue star in a different galaxy exploded in 1987. The Large Magellanic Cloud, a satellite galaxy on the doorstep of the Milky Way, was covered in ribbons and rings of blazing gas on February 23, 1987, Earth time, when a gigantic star exploded in front of observers from all over the world. That region of the sky is now marked by a smoke ring that is two-thirds of a light year wide. It contains over 19 suns worth of burning hot star stuff, some of which is still radioactive. This star stuff is continuing to expand into the universe and is being attentively observed by humans using tools like the Hubble Space Telescope. The demon spawn of this cosmic calamity, the core of the exploded star, has been notably absent from all of these studies for the past 36 years. Is it a black hole now? A neutron star? A massive chunk of matter? Did the star's core suddenly vanish? Nobody knew until recently. In the remains of the supernova, a group of radio astronomers led by Phil Segan and Mikako Matsura of Cardiff University in Wales asserted to have discovered a blob of dust emitting over 100 times as much energy as our own sun. Could there be a neutron star, a powerful speck of extremely hot matter, the missing core of the defunct star? The answer might be yes, according to a second team of theorists led by Danny Page of the National Autonomous University of Mexico. According to his calculations, the neutron star left behind by the explosion would be between 2 million and 4 million degrees Kelvin by this point, easily hot enough to melt the blob. If it turns out that the heat source is a neutron star, it would be the most recent discovery of one of nature's most extreme creations. The universe's densest stable arrangements of matter are neutron stars, which typically have a mass half times that of the sun and are squeezed into a ball the size of Boston. Imagine Mount Everest completely condensed into a teaspoon. A neutron star might become a black hole by absorbing any more mass, which would cause an infinite collapse. Pulsars are radio bursts that resemble lighthouses and are produced by neutron stars that are spinning and magnetic. Nobody is aware of their precise structure. Insight into the behavior of matter at the extreme could be gained by physicists 
by studying the evolution of neutron stars. Naturally, it would also support astronomers' long-held beliefs of what occurs when a star dies. The large Magellanic Cloud is barely 168,000 light-years distant, making supernova 1987A, as it is called, the nearest supernova to Earth in hundreds of years. It was rapidly identified by astronomers as a Type II supernova, which results from the collapse of a huge star. At its brightest in the early summer of 1987, the supernova was emitting as much energy as 250 million suns, making it almost as bright as the stars in the Big Dipper from that distance. There are three conceivable outcomes for a star that has run out of fuel and died, according to astronomers. Depending on its starting mass and other characteristics of its composition, it may eventually turn into a hot, dense cinder known as a white dwarf, an even hotter, denser neutron star, or a black hole. The star that erupted was later identified as SK-69202, a huge blue star, and it immediately disappeared from view. Its peak mass was roughly 19 times that of the Sun, which places it inside the mass range that astronomers believe should result in the formation of a neutron star. The later finding that a surge of two dozen light, subatomic neutrinos had smashed into particle detectors on Earth two or three hours before the supernova was spotted confirmed that conviction. They had escaped the collapsing star faster than the visible light, carrying messages from the inferno. A big star like this one creates layers of helium, oxygen, carbon, and other newly created elements as it goes through its thermonuclear immolation. Iron, the most stable element, is growing in a core at the center. It implodes and then bounces back, leaving behind a hot, dense neutron star when it approaches a limit known as the Chandrasekhar limit, at which atomic forces can no longer maintain its weight. Through the layers of the onion, a shockwave spreads. Numerous neutrinos produced by the energy of the collapse are accompanying it and fueling it through absorptive heating. In fact, these particles carry up to 99% of the energy from a supernova, which is then released into space. Even neutrinos struggle to escape the core of a massive proto-neutron star, despite their eerie ability to penetrate through solid lead like moonlight through the glass. Astronomers believe that neutrinos' energy is what gives the star its explosive power. The supernova is likely to fade, and the newly born neutron star will fall into a black hole if the neutrinos do not emerge quickly enough to heat an explosion. They did manage to escape in the event of supernova 1987A. If a lot of matter had fallen back onto the star, it might have eventually developed into a black hole, but the supernova's strength implies that did not happen. The neutron star ought to have lived as a result. Dr. Matsuura and her team used the ALMA to scan the supernova remnant in July 2015 and discovered that the dust emission in the ejecta is clumpy and asymmetric. The team named this concentrated area the keyhole, where the warm blob thought to contain the neutron star was located, and where its molecular emanations could hardly be seen. They claimed that the blob was radiating at a temperature of 35 Kelvin, or barely 35 Celsius above absolute zero, whereas the surrounding air was just 20 Kelvin. If a neutron star exists, astronomers have previously identified the keyhole as a potential site for it. Because of the asymmetry of the supernova, more of the ejecta flew in one direction than the other, causing the remaining core to recoil in the opposite direction at a speed of hundreds of miles per second. From the explosion's original location, the core has now moved a little more than one-tenth of a light year. How will scientists determine whether a neutron star is present in the end? The James Webb Telescope has the ability to shed light on the riddles surrounding supergiant stars thanks to its cutting-edge capabilities. The telescope may offer groundbreaking insights into their evolution, variability, and fate by thorough atmosphere study, surface mapping, probing its interior, and examining its role as a supernova generator. Webb's debut is incredibly exciting and holds great potential for expanding our understanding of stellar events and the enormous mysteries of the cosmos. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.